Okay, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday we read chapter one of Harry Houdini, Master of Magic. Today I'm going to read um, part of chapter two for us, and then you guys are going to go and answer the questions. Here we go. Chapter two, Behold a Miracle. One day when Eric was 16, he went into a bookstore. Looking along the shelves, he came across an old book on the life of Robert Houdin. It was a moment that changed his life. Eugene, or Jean Eugene Robert Houdin, was the greatest magician in France. He performed before the French emperor and before England's Queen Victoria. He pulled cannonballs from an empty hat. He made trees grow fruit on the stage. He even floated ladies in midair. Eurich spent the night reading Robert Houdin's life story. The next morning, his mother found him in bed, still reading. Erich, she scolded. So much reading, it will hurt your eyes. Mother, he said, please, never mind my eyes. I am reading the most important book of my life. So, Mother Wee said, what makes this book so important at six o'clock in the morning? Eric held up the book. This man, Robert Houdin, has made me see that I can make magic my life's work. If he did it, so can I. Mother Weiss's eyebrows lifted. A fine thought, Eric, but what can you make? But can you make money doing magic? Remember poor Papa, he is unable to work for us. There is the rent to pay, and we must eat. He stared at the book. I don't know how much money I can make, but I want to become a magician just like Robert Houdin. Within a few days, he left his job at H. Richter's Sons. He also made another important change. To honor his hero, he decided to change his name to Houdini. Since friends called him Harry, which sounded like Harry, he became Harry Houdini. He was 17 years old. Harry's younger brother, Theo, was also interested in magic, so he decided, I'm sorry, so they decided to become partners. Mother Weiss served satin, sewed satin costumes, jackets, and short pants for her two sons, and they began practicing tricks together, calling themselves the Houdini brothers. They gave shows wherever they could at neighborhood parties, club meetings, and beer halls. The pay was small, but they were learning how to be magicians. Their show was simple and fast moving. Harry touched the buttonhole of his jacket and a flower appeared. He reached into a candle flame and pulled out a red handkerchief. He did card tricks. Then came the big trick of the show. The audience watched as Harry tied Theo's hands behind his back. Theo then stepped into a trunk. Harry closed the lid and locked it. After tying a rope around the trunk, he placed a screen in front of it. Harry stepped to the front of the stage. When I clap my hands three times, behold, a miracle. He clapped his hands and then stepped behind the screen. A moment later, Theo stepped in front of the screen. Setting the screen to the side, Theo untied the trunk. He lifted the lid and Harry stepped out. His hands were tied behind his back. Harry had purchased the trunk from another magician. It had a board on one side that was loose and opened into the trunk. Both Theo and Harry slipped through the opening and left the rope lock untouched. The audience, of course, didn't know about the loose board. Harry and Theo had practiced the trick until they could slip in and out in seconds. After one show, when Harry and Theo returned to the Weiss apartment, they found their mother in tears. Your father, she gasped, go to him. In the bedroom, they found that Rabbi Weiss was dying. The old man made Harry swear on the Bible, always to care for his mother. Slowly, the name of the Houdini brothers became known. Two years after Harry and Theo started their act, they went to the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. They performed their act on an outdoor stage set up with others along a midway. People walked past the stages, stopping here and there to watch the sword swallower the fire eater, the strong man, the jugglers, and perhaps the Houdinis. The next year, Harry and Theo took their act to Coney Island in New York. At the end of one performance, the show manager, Sam Gumperetz, called Harry aside. Harry, you shouldn't say, you can see I ain't got nothing up my sleeve. Harry, Harry was surprised. What's wrong with it? 
But once Harry understood that good English would help his act, he worked hard to improve his grammar. While he worked at Coney Island, an important event happened in Harry's life. He got married. The girl's full name was whew, Wilhelmina Beatrice Rahner. But she was called Bess. Thank goodness. She was tiny and had dark hair. On the day of their marriage, they had known each other for only 10 days. Bess was 18 and Harry was 19. For the Houdini Brothers Magic Act, the marriage came at the right time. Theo was growing too big to squeeze in and out of the escape trunk. Bess weighed only 94 pounds. She could easily slip through the open board, so Bess joined Harry in the act, and Theo went off to start a new act of his own. And Bess and Harry called themselves the Master Monarchs of Modern Mystery. They were young. They, sure, they were sure of themselves. They would get ahead in life by magic, or so they thought. Here's a picture. And we are done. Don't forget to answer your questions, guys.